Hello and welcome to the Laird's channel and today we're based here at the National Centre in the powder processing uh, area of the metal powder bed fusion uh, facility. Uh, behind us you can see uh, our Trump material changeover kit. We've been working uh, to develop A20X parameters this year and early next year we'll be looking at other high strength aluminiums and also getting pure copper capability via a G additive uh, Q10 plus. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the Weirer project that the man to the left of me uh, led. And this is Nick Crutchley, senior research engineer from the metal powder bed fusion team here at NCAM. Uh, and he's going to be telling us all about a Weirer. So do you want to kick off about what, what is actually a Weirer? Sure, okay. Best place to start, a Weirer stands for external wing in regional aircraft. So mm. that's how the acronym is broken down. Mm. Um, and essentially it's a collaboration um, under the Uira program, which is bigger than this project alone, mm. but it's a collaboration between Asturi Aero Structures and MTC. Yep. And the idea is to remanufacture a, a, an aileron hinge bracket mm. using additive manufacturing to cool. make it lightweight, reduce waste, and overall improve performance. And this is a CR&D project? And a CR&D project, yeah, yeah under time. the Clean Sky 2 banner. So do you want to tell us more about the Weira uh, bracket itself? Yep, sure. So these are all the re redesigned brackets um, mm -hmm. and the bracket itself fits into the aileron hinge. So this is the, this is the aileron spar itself, which is the leading edge of the flap of the wing, mm -hmm. which controls the banking of the plane. And our bracket fits inside here, which is connection from the actuator that controls the, the angle of the aileron into the aileron itself. Mm -hmm. It's so quite a flight critical part. Absolutely, yeah. So that's one of the reasons why it was chosen was that it is a flight critical part. Mm. So yeah, if that fails, then you lose control of the aircraft as well, which is a challenge. It's yeah. also a fatigue loaded part yeah. again. Uh, so yeah. quite a lot to actually consider. When Absolutely. When so trying to lightweight a part as much as possible and remove mass, yeah. It's a really quite a good like, case study of, you know, if you're going to do this, you want a flight critical part and you want opportunities to remove weight. How was the particular AM process chosen because I know there's obviously a lot of AM processes that sure, are available. Absolutely. I know this project was also originally scoped in about 2017, so it's it was a fair well. And we know that additive manufacturing moves quickly, yeah, uh, so a lot's changed since then. Yes. Um, so it, initially, there was a, a concept drawn up um, mm -hmm. from the original bracket. So the original bracket is a, a raw billet machine down to um, to size to fit into the, the spar itself. Um, and we did a very basic understanding of that design space mm. and looked at how we might change the design. From that mm. concept, essentially, we, just, we looked at what processes would be best to manufacture the component. And we came down to laser powder bed fusion and mm. electron beam powder bed fusion mm. um, at the time. And we then did a, base, a full pew matrix to understand which would be better. And it was actually a very close run thing. Um, mm. But essentially, the, um, the ability to remove supports um, and to place strut angles wherever we wanted them to or in much more freedom in electron beam powder bed fusion mm. it was what won it for us so that's what we moved to. And those are some of the benefits of electron beam powder bed fusion. Exactly. Is yeah. there anything else? Um, so the fact that we could have stacked the parts through the build volume would have been yeah. very useful. Uh, so say we take this all the way through to a productionized system we could stack these on top and build 40 in a build or something, maybe even more. Mm. Um, that's obviously a, a huge benefit to the process. So can you tell us a little bit about the design of that actual bracket? Yeah, of course, yeah. So it's a, a layout optimized design um, with variable strut thickness. So actually all the struts are not the same diameter, mm. um, which, is, which is unique in itself. And then there's actually a significant amount of work in ensuring that the blending of the struts to the tabs themselves, so these, these uh, connection points with the spar, mm. is, is suitable and doesn't you know, increase the stresses at those points because it's, mm. it's a fatigue loaded part. So obviously we want those stresses to be as minimal as possible in those connections. Um, the design itself was, was very successful. So it reduced the part weight by 15.9%, um, mm. which was our target, our target was 15%. As I said at the beginning, it's a Clean Sky 2 project. So obviously improving aviation, making it leaner, making it more um, economical. Um, and it also reduced the waste by 90%. So the fact that we could um, manufacture it in a layer-wise fashion, and we used the powder, meant mm. that we had a 90% waste saving based on uh, machining it from raw billet. Yeah. The, one of the other things to capture here is that this, uh, although this is a fatigue-loaded critical component, there aren't that many aileron hinge brackets mm. on a plane, but the idea is that this 
is a bracket that is representative of other brackets. Yeah. And if we can do it with a critical bracket, we can easily do it with a non-critical bracket and it can be expanded across the entire plane and, and take those 15% weight savings all the way across yeah. thousands of components on a plane rather than the six or seven that are on one, so one sort of wing. Where applicable, where AM is the, the right technology to use, that logic should... Should expand out should, exactly yeah. to real savings of, of a plane, yeah. And that, was that design for additive manufacturing, that was done in-house at the MTC? Exactly, so all the, all the iterations you see were designed by the MTC DFAN team and then uh, analysed through FEA, also yeah. throughout the MTC um, internal teams. And that'll be taken into account, I imagine, everything to do with the full uh, method of manufacture, so they'll be taken into account uh, the actual EBM process, they've taken into account things like yeah. surface finishing. Exactly, so this is designed specifically for electron beam powder bed fusion. Mm. If it was for laser powder bed fusion, we would have used a different design. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's very specific to the technology that we wanted to use. And right in saying Sandeep from the design team, he has done a full webinar on actual design of this. Correct, yes, yeah. 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 Mm. And if you want to find out more about the actual Q20 uh, process that these parts were built on, the electron beam melting process. We have some separate videos uh, where we did some stuff with uh, Oxford Brooks Racing and that goes really in depth into that process about how the parts are melting, the, the powder processing and all the various uh, ancillary processes around that and we'll, we'll link that also in the description. Uh, but surface finishing is obviously a massive part of this project. Yeah. Do you want to uh, talk to us a little bit about why we get the surface finish? Yep. on this part and also walk us through the steps that led us to uh, achieving that sort of surface finish there. Of course, yeah, okay. So, yeah, as you mentioned, the, the surface roughness of this part is, is, is relatively rough um, and that's through many factors. One, um, being support with the smart marks that you can see on the bottom where we put support structures to mm. hold the part in place um, and remove heat. Uh, the other being the powder particle size distribution. So an EBM is typically rougher than laser powder bed fusion, mm. it's, uh, 45 to 105 microns um, and then the layer effect as well so the stair wires stepping of, of mm. the layers themselves which are, are typically thicker in, mm. um, in in electron beam as well in this case were 70 microns and that's uh, that's almost a trade-off from uh, Arcam itself I mean they're trying to go how do we build parts quicker yeah um, it's a production rate versus a surface finish uh, argument absolutely um, yeah and the, the reason that it's critical for us is that it's it's a fatigue loaded part so mm -hmm. um, the, the surface roughness itself is essentially lots of micro waves and notches, mm. and those notches uh, intensify the stresses at the bottom of the notch, which mean that the stress of the part is under itself, is magnified in that location, which mm. can easily cause fatigue yeah. cracks to grow and, and, and causes problem and even failure of the part. So knowing that, what were some of the, the steps that were taken to then Absolutely. Uh, that. Yeah. So uh, very similarly to the, techno the AM technology itself, we did a down selection. So we were trying to work out which is the best technique to surface finish this component because we, we didn't know at the time. It was it, it's research, it's a C&D project. Yeah. We have to work out all these things as we go. That's the fun of it. Um, and we did lots of different techniques. We used chemical techniques, we used mass finishing techniques, we used vibrational techniques, all, those, all, all the techniques that we could find at the moment mm. that we thought were uh, reasonably suitable to the component and eventually came down to the fact that mass finishing techniques and in particular centrifugal high energy finishing and stream finishing mm. were the two that were most suited to this part. I imagine it's also quite difficult because the part itself is titanium 6.4 Correct. and yes, that's quite a difficult material to finish in itself. Yeah, it was, it was a challenging process, um, absolutely. And there were significant challenges all the way through getting from a part that looks like this and is relatively rough to a part that is, that is very close to what we need, uh, mm. but, but still not, not quite perfect. Um, Do you want to talk us through some of the steps that one would take to actually go from this to this? So this was mainly finished through centrifugal high energy finishing. There's a small amount of hand finishing that goes into removing the support weight marks because mm. uh, they're, they're relatively detrimental. But removing those off is, is relatively easy hand, with hand finishing and then it was put into Chef, which is centrifugal high energy finishing. Uh, essentially, this is a, a randomized mass finishing process. So mm. there's a ceramic media that's put into a barrel and the part is loaded into that barrel um, and, and encapsulated. And then the barrel itself is, is tumbled and that tumbling action of the, of the ceramic media erodes at the surface in a randomized fashion. And because there's, there's no fixtures or anything, the media can get in all the crevices of the, of the component and, and achieve a, a, nice, a nice high shine surface finish, as you can see there. And that was, there was some iteration in that process, wasn't there, with in terms of the design and working out where 
uh, media could and couldn't get into. Yeah, exactly. So this is one of the earlier, um, one of the earlier designs of, of, of the bracket, and you can see that there's some, some struts in this inter interior area here, um, and we ended up opening up, opening these out so that there was a, there's more free space in the middle mm. because what we were finding is that the media was having trouble traveling into this free space yeah. in the center. And by opening it out, we got a much better flow of the media through, which resulted in a much better and more consistent surface finish. It just sort of highlights that importance of the sort of design for manufacturer stage. Uh, exactly. Just incorporating all of the steps and try to cut out any sort of headaches yeah. that you could come right at the start of the process, which is, you know, uh, when you design the part. Not always as easy to know all of those no. uh, issues that you come into, <laughs> but. I suppose it's, it's why doing projects like these are quite exactly. uh, valuable to, to inform designers of, of where they need to uh, be thinking about. Exactly. I imagine understanding all of those, those factors, because if for a part of this criticality, yeah. being able to do that, uh, have, have that understanding of the reproducibility or repeatability, I should say, uh, when you're doing this manufacturing process is critical. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, as I said, a critical component. Um, we were making an, a small number of demonstrators yeah. for, to prove the project and to prove the, the concepts. If you were to take this forward with a, you know, a full manufacturing process to put these on planes, mm. yeah, absolutely. The repeatability and reproducibility of it would be really heavily need to be understood yeah. and at the moment is not well understood. Uh, again, m similarly, where the material is being removed from is not. Mm. Some of these processes, Chef in particular, is um, a randomized process. There is a lot of random interaction with the material, mm. which means that it is tricky to control in a, in a, in a fully repeatable way. Mm. Yeah. But these are all things we should be looking at. You know, it's, it's, it's what keeps me in a job, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. These are the things that we need to continue to, to understand and, and, and build. And and is any of this information publicly available or can, can people yeah, access it? Yeah, so we've it? disseminated um, a, number of th a number of things uh, through the Rural Project that we'll yeah. put links to, absolutely. So it's, Fantastic with the part. It's it's really interesting to see all of the, the, the thought that has to go into it. But how does does someone actually take this part that we have here and get it actually onto a plane to yeah. tr truly realise all of those benefits yeah, that you speak? That's on? a fantastic question. Um, and ultimately, the story is quite long. Um, it involves a lot of mechanical testing and a lot of physical testing to understand the the component itself has the properties that um, we have designed with, and to ensure that the the, the manufacturing process itself is repeatable and reliable. Mm. So when we switch out a powder batch, as you would have to in a production process, mm. uh, when you're going to make hundreds of thousands of them in the future, mm. does that change the properties? How is that understood? What do you have to do when you do those sorts of things? So there's a lot of uh, complexity in the qualification program mm. and understanding exactly that that, com that bracket will react the way that you want it to. And it involves all the small things like from coupons testing all the way through to a full part test on mm. uh, a representative environment jig. Yeah. yeah, so MTC have created some, some knowledge on this already and have uploaded this to MTC's knowledge hub, which we can, we can utilize here and, and disseminate to, to, to the yeah. viewers. Yeah. And that's, that's a knowledge hub that everyone can access. Uh, it's on our website uh, and it's filled with uh, quite a lot of documents. Yeah, uh, some really good stuff there. Yeah. yeah, really good free information on that knowledge hub. Please. Please do use it, it's, it's, it's there for you guys to use. As we know, 2017 was a while ago and, and yeah. the inevitable march of time, especially in AM, technology changes quickly. What sort of advancements or, or changes have you seen in, the, in technology that might almost further improve the business case of, of making something like this out of AM? Yeah, sure. The, so electron beam powder bed fusion was the process that we used and there's been a lot of development in that area alone. Um, there's been new entrants to the market which have changed things, which have introduced new materials, they've introduced new pre-sintering strategies, reducing the pre-sintering that's necessary um, and also productionizing the machines and making them more repeatable and those sorts of things and in, in, in improving the ancillaries around the machines themselves which would all improve the business case for manufacturing that on a productionized scale. Mm. Um, in laser powder bed fusion, there's also been development, especially within uh, one of the key areas that's, that's useful to this project in support angle. So mm -hmm. typically something like this back in 2016, 2017 would have been very heavily supported and reduced the, the benefit of mm -hmm. designing something with quite so many thin struts because it would have been difficult to remove the supports. Um, now there are machines and there are um, strategies to reduce the supports and even get angles down to 10 degrees or even zero degrees mm. in, in situations like HADAP and, and Velo 3D, which would have been hugely beneficial. Mm. Uh, a second thing with laser powder perfusion is the materials that are um, available. At the time of um, scoping the projects, the, 
the material available was aluminium silicon 10, which just doesn't have the material properties that we would have needed for mm. the, the high strength bracket that was that was uh, that was in place. It was raw out of a, um, it was it was machined out of a raw um, high strength aluminium block. Um, but there are now materials like A20X and scam alloy that we could now use that would give us the properties that mm. we would need to to perhaps lightweight this even further. So take that 15% weight saving perhaps to 20 or 30. Yeah. Yeah. And those are things, and especially on the, the high strength aluminium, you're looking into those next year, aren't you? Yes, we're, we're going to be running a project with ESA that's going to be investigating all the high strength aluminium alloys that are on the market at the moment because, mm. it's a, as I said, materials are, are growing in, in, in AM. There was typically a small pool of materials available um, not long ago, and that is ra rapidly growing in aluminium. Mm. seems to be the area where it's growing the quickest. So we're going to be investigating uh, all the alloys that are available and what properties they have. That's quite exciting. And yeah, it's going to be very interesting, yeah. Also, we're also looking at uh, support minimizing technologies on laser powered bed fusion as yes, well. Yes, exactly. So as I said, with um, being able to create the struts at the right angles that we wanted, this mm. is going to be another key piece of information to be feeding back to the design team to say, actually, these are the capabilities you can now design with. Exciting time to be part of Encamp. Yeah, you know, as I'm, always. Yeah. So of course, this wasn't just a MTC uh, project, there was a, a full consortia involved. I don't know if you want to say a bit more. Yeah, the yeah. Um, as I said uh, at the beginning, this is a Clean Sky 2 project, uh, mm. Horizon 2020 funded. So we want to say you know, a big thanks to those guys for funding the project and you know, enabling all this work to happen. And then also, you know, uh, it was a big collaboration between MTC and Asturia Aerostructures, mm. uh, which, without which, again, this project wouldn't have been possible. We wouldn't have been able to demonstrate the benefits that we can do here in, in making a sustainable AM project sustainable AM part for clean aviation. Fantastic. No? All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you for thank you. Uh, telling us all about the We're a Bracket and Project. Uh, and thank you for watching. <laughs>